So in this video, I'll be giving the latest updates on the IHOP Mike Bickle situation. We are going to take a look at what is going on with the 24-7 prayer room and what is the latest news on the new church they had planned to open, as well as who is leading IHOP KC now. I also want to share with you a friend of mine's YouTube page who was a worship leader down at IHOP KC. But he left after the scandal broke because he felt he couldn't truly worship God in that environment. One of the most gifted musicians I have ever heard. So you're going to want to stick with me through the video. What is worse than all this? The Kansas City Star will be releasing an article shortly about more essay that occurred at IHOP KC with an adult worship leader from 2008 to 2010 with several teenage boys. These events seem to happen off canvas, but another bad story coming out of IHOP KC. This story is like an onion with so many layers and layers. It seems that the exposure will not end with this ministry, or it seems like it's never going to stop. Just to be honest with you, I'm totally just devastated and destroyed that all that has come out of IHOP KC. But a friend of mine, Joel Richardson, had summed this up pretty well. So you're seeing here, Joel Richardson posted this iconic image of the last U.S. helicopter out of Vietnam stacked on a picture of the IHOP KC prayer room. It seems to me that uh, IHOP will slowly fade away until there's nothing left to it. Uh, they seem to stubbornly seem to want to go down the wrong road and try to continue this ministry. But like Joel is saying here, that uh, it looks like this ministry is finished. So Joel came to the tri-state area here in Connecticut. I'm in New York City, but I drove out there to go see him preach. He's one of the best end times teachers on the end times. And after the Mike Bickle situation, it left me with this void because Mike really had been a teacher that imparted so much to me on the end times and just profoundly affected my life. But I started following Joel's ministry a lot more closely, and uh, he was able to fill that void to some degree. And I'm just so appreciative for Joel's voice speaking up on the IHOP KC situation, not staying silent, being someone that's an influential ministry and has a lot of reach. He spoke out on this as an advocate for the victims from day one, and I just really appreciate him standing out because he was putting his neck out on the line and was sounding the alarm from day one and refused to let IHOP KC gaslight or get away with anything. So I just wanted to say how thankful I am for Joel Richardson for speaking out and being a voice for the people that, had, that got hurt at IHOP KC, and I'm just uh, so just brokenhearted. I love Joel, and just um, I suggest that you follow his ministry on YouTube. Uh, he's doing some really good work, and it focuses on missions work overseas and different things. So hi, my name is Joshua Simone. Welcome to my channel. My ministry is called Torn Curtain. That is because when Jesus died on the cross and rose again, the curtain in the Old Testament temple was tore from top to bottom. We now have a new covenant with God and direct access to his presence. Torn Curtain is a nonprofit media organization with the goal of reaching one people, one billion people through video content with the gospel message. So I have channels in news and politics as well as another channel on evangelism. And the channel you're watching right now is my main channel. So for those who are just joining in, with the IHOP KC story, let me just give a brief uh, summary of what has happened so far. So Mike Bickle, the founder of IHOP KC and the leader of the 24-7 prayer and worship movement that started in 2001, which had a worldwide influence and influenced millions of people all around the world. He was found guilty of clergy essay with four different women to date and one woman who was a minor at times. Also, their main worship leader, Miss D. Edwards, was also involved in some sexual scandal of her own and even was arrested in an alcohol-related incident with another worship leader. So IHOP did launch an investigation into all of this. However, 
they did not work with the primary Jane Doe as well as the, the advocacy group that had a lot of the information and did kind of partially their own investigation to begin with. So those two groups did not participate fully in this investigation. So many people felt that this wasn't truly a third party investigation. And I have to agree. I think this will haunt IHOP KC for a long time until it closes. But the investigation conducted by Rosie McInera of Lathrop Group found that Bickle more than likely or not abused his power. And they did acknowledge some of the sexual behaviors. Since the scandal broke, IHOP has faced financial issues, bleeding $500,000 a month due to plummeting support and donations. And the ministry dramatically started cutting off staff and programs. They closed IHOP University, cutting staff from a few hundred down to less than a few dozen. Now they continue to move forward with the 24-7 prayer and worship. And they had plans to launch a new church called Sanctuary Church with Isaac Benner and Matt Candler. But what we are going to see in a few minutes is they are not going to continue with Sanctuary Church. And we're going to go over all of the latest details and take a look at who will be leading IHOP KC forward. And I'm also going to play some of my friends music who was a worship leader down at IHOP KC, but is now back in the tri-state area with me. So you're going to want to stick with me to the end. I'm covering this story because I followed the ministry very closely for years, sometimes watching the prayer room several hours a day. I just used to put it on in the background as I worked to just stay in the spirit of 24-7 prayer and worship. No, it's not needed, but I like to do it. It just kept me closer to God and in the spirit of continually connecting with Him, and I love the ministry. I supported a musician at IHOP KC who was a close friend of mine, and at the end of the video, I want you to see his YouTube channel, because his ministry ended up falling apart, and he had to come back to the tri-state area. Listen, I'm not here to bash Mike Bickle or some of the other leaders at IHOP KC, but what he did was wrong, and he probably should not be in ministry again. And I want to talk about this. Because I want other pastors and ministry leaders to be put on notice. The games have to stop. The double lives has to stop. We must worship God in spirit and in truth. And we cannot really truly worship him like that is if we have all this dirt beneath the surface. The church has to be cleansed. And that's what you're seeing right now. That's what you're seeing going on right now. God is taking out some of the trash, and some of it is long overdue. You can't behave like this and think that you're not going to go get away with it. God will not be mocked. His word says a man will reap what it sows. And it seems sometimes that God might take some time bringing these things to light, I think because he's a patient God, slow to anger, and he wants to give people time to repent. But there is a time when judgment comes, and judgment must begin in the house of the Lord. That's something we're not talking about in the church much anymore. The judgment of God, the wrath of God, right, being poured out. That God will eventually respond at some point to injustice. He will respond to the cries of his people. And when he does, sometimes it's very severe. But God is cleaning house right now in the body of Christ. And he's giving a warning to the body of Christ. Your sins will find you out. So if you're a ministry leader, you must be above reproach. You must truly live the life. You must truly be in communion with God. If you're not going to follow God with your whole heart, you shouldn't be in ministry. And so some of these videos I'm making because I want the church, I want leaders to feel the sting and the pain involved when you're living in a compromised state. And this situation spilled to become such a disaster that just affected people all over the world. My videos were viewed by 30, 40 different countries from all over the world on IHOP KC. Strange and remote places, too. Some of these countries I'd never even heard of. 
this affected the worldwide audience of Christianity. So this was just not a local church issue. I know many people said you're gossiping, you're spreading negative information. Not necessarily. This was a high-profile ministry that involved a public scandal and a public unfolding. Therefore, we must talk about and process these things publicly. But if you're not living right for God, get out of ministry, because God will have no point overturning the tables, overturning your ministries, as we're seeing now with Gateway Church, as we're seeing with Tony Evans and many others. God is cleansing his house. So let's look right here into IHOP KC's plans to start, that they had to start another church. So this article was back from July 2nd, and it said that basically former pastors at IHOP KC Forerunner Church, Matt and Morgan Bennett, along with Matt Candler, former president of IHOP University, filed, they filed um, incorporation for Sanctuary Church on April 18th, 2024. So it seems here that they broke from IHOP and they plan to start this church and basically and start something new, which leads to a whole conversation should they even do this. But the truth is, is um, they had planned to start this church. But we're going to take a little look into how this story is going to unfold. So you see in here pictures of Matt, Isaac and his wife and their plans to start Sanctuary Church. So we're going to see here further down the page in this article that according to a leak email and recording at IHOP st staff meeting in April, both IHOP KC and IHOP U were planning to close immediately due to financial issues. At the time, IHOP KC was reportedly bleeding $500,000 a month, and this ministry was also facing possible lawsuits from Bickle's alleged victims. OK, I think up to date, I don't think that they have been sued that I know of that the that the that the news is reporting, which is kind of shocking to some degree. Right. But on the leak recording, Isaac Bennett said that by closing the doors and starting a new organization, IHOP KC hoped to limit liability related to the potential lawsuit from victims. We are the people to sue at the end of the day, said Bennett. That produces significant liabilities here. So in this leaked email, the IHOP KC leader similarly stated that the best way to resolve the issue is to close IHOP KC as an organization and ship to more of a missional church structure in the future. Okay, so obviously people are very upset with Isaac Bennett's thoughts and comments on this matter. The whole situation just seems terrible across the board. He seemed to be making um, statements along the lines that we got to protect the brand and um, we have to form another organization so we don't get sued. So they're looking for a way to continue this ministry when they should probably just close it. But people are really upset for Isaac saying something like this. And the truth is, is when the foundation of something is rotten, it's hard to build on. OK, Jesus said to build your house upon a rock because the sands and the storms are definitely going to come. And if the foundation is not built on the rock, the ministry won't last. So IHOP KC said it would not close all operations, but we begin a transition and a reorganization process. As part of this process, IHOP U would close down, but the 24-7 prayer room would continue the organization instead. Two days after the CP article, Christian Post, Bennett Incorporated Sanctuary Church. Then two weeks after that, Bennett announced that Forerunner Church would close. It needs to happen so we could move forward with the new start, Bennett told the congregation. He addresses and he recognizes that this has been a very painful season, and he said he is sorry for the pain and the difficulty that everybody has been through. But we are going to see here on July 24th, the Roy's report reported that IHOP KC cancels plans for a new church, but says that the prayer room will continue. So you see in here in the picture, General Fuller, Malachi O'Brien, and Isaac Bennett, plans for a new church connected to the embattled International House of Prayer have been canceled, according to an email sent to IHOP KC community this morning. 
Also IHOP executive team, Isaac Bennett and his wife, who are planning to pastor the new church, have left the 24-7 prayer ministry. So I see this as a really good thing. When the scandal broke down at IHOP KC, I remember talking to some people that I knew down there on the ground, and my sources told me that out of all of the leaders that were leading at that particular time, they had confirmed that only Isaac Bennett really seemed truly heartbroken over what was going on. He seemed to be one of the only people that were really heartbroken for the people and responded with... Uh, the correct posture to be humble, contrite, and brokenhearted. And listen, Isaac didn't do everything right in this situation, okay? Um, But I have to say that I think he was surrounded by bad people in a bad situation, and I think that that's what caused more of the some of the things that he got himself involved in. Listen, I've been involved with many different ministries, large ones, small ones, And the truth is, is that younger people don't have as much influence in these organizations. I don't think that Isaac should be held to uh, as high as a standard as some of the ELT and the leaders there, because I know what it's like. The younger people never have the same voice as some of the senior older leaders. But again, I'm not going to give Isaac a pass on any of that. But at the same time, I do feel like out of the bunch of apples down at IHOP KC, he was one of the better ones that leaned towards someone that I trust that has a real heart for God and a heart for the people. But I'm really glad to hear that he broke away from this group. And it shows me that I was right to Isaac to a certain degree. I now feel safe to declare Ichabod over the IHOP KC situation. This ministry will most likely slowly fade until it completely dissolves. I, IHOP KC lost a leg in a war. And what they tried to do is just continue with the ministry like nothing happened here. But this will most likely fail. But it's in the hands of... It's in the Lord's hands now, and we'll see what he does, because ultimately God will have the final response in all of this. If God wants it to continue, it will continue. If God's not in this, it will fail. So let's see what happens. Okay, so as I said, Isaac Bennett breaks with the 24-7 prayer room, and they're not going forward with the church. Let's continue in the article. This email was sent and reconfigured by the IHOP KC Board of Trustees and sought to dispel previous statements that IHOP KC was shutting down, though many of the expressions of IHOP KC have closed, including its affiliated forerunner church, pastored by the Bennetts, and IHOP University. The ministry will continue to operate its prayer room, the email said. So there was this letter circulating on Twitter that gave some more details. And basically, this was an internal letter released at IHOP, and it said this. It became clear to us that the trajectory of IHOP KC board and the trajectory we saw forward were two different paths. So we're seeing here that there was a break between Isaac Bennett and the board at IHOP KC, that they were going in two different directions. And so they choose to part ways and go in different directions. I think there was also a plea here for ministry, for support, for Isaac. Um, So again, I'm very happy to see Isaac exit this group. I am not sure if Isaac plans to continue to plant a church apart from IHOP KC. If you guys have any information about that, please let me know. I would be interested to cover it. But Isaac should probably take a long sabbatical at a minimum to determine what his next steps are. Um, And I'm glad to see that he broke with this group. I I don't have a lot of confidence in them. We're going to take a look at who's on the board. They finally released their board members after many months of kind of secrecy of who was running IHOP KC and who's on the board. This letter that circulated showed who are their board members. So let's get into that. Okay, so the Roy's report released this as well as a letter circulated on Twitter. The list includes board chairman, which is General Kurt Fuller, who served as a short time at IHOP KC director, executive director. So we know that 
General Kurt Fuller was going to stay on at IHOP KC. Like I said, most likely, I believe he was probably appointed by Mike Bickle directly, although that's just speculation. Um, most likely, he is going to be the board of the chairman going forward with IHOP KC. So it's a whole different situation. I wouldn't have picked a military general to lead this organization. I probably would have picked someone with a counseling or inner healing background. It's just uh, I was scratching my head. Now, I understand mil military generals have a lot of different experiences with many different things, um, and they could be extremely valuable. But this is a hurting community. So picking a military general to run, I just scratching my head at that. But also they included that board members include Malachi O'Brien, who is a business owner and a starch defender of IHOP KC, who curled early reports of Mike Bicker's sexual misconduct failure porn. So I think everybody knew that eventually Malachi O'Brien would end up on this board. He was kind of really sticking up for IHOP on Twitter, which he has, I think, like 50,000 followers and stuff. And so there were many reports months ago that he would definitely come in to be on the board. So Malachi is. And then also they have Ed Hatchett, who was also with Mike Bickle when IHOP KC was launched. Wellington Boone, a pastor with longtime friend of IHOP KC with controversial views on slavery as being redemptive. I don't know anything about that. Sounds kind of weird. Cindy Dobb, an IHOP KC missionary who was named as a director for IHOP KC in 2023. And Steve Brand, a high-end Canadian donor, according to a former IHOP KC leadership. So this is the team moving forward. I think this is an assumption on my part that probably most of these people are heavily have been influenced by Mike Bickle, might still be in contact with him, might still be friends with him. So instead of going in another direction and bringing in some fresh faces, it looks like, and I'm making an assumption here, that basically they picked people that would be loyal to Mike, loyal to IHOP KC brand, and possibly, let's just be honest, possibly be preparing everyone for an emergence of Mike Bickle in the future because it looks like many of these people are his good friends. Malachi O'Brien, although has been connected with IHOP KC for many years and attends the prayer room, probably seems like the only fresh face on that group. Okay, so let's just finish this Roy's Report article. According to an email, the prayer room will continue to be the heart of IHOP KC and will continue its operation in its current location at the Red Bridge Center. The prayer room will maintain an emphasis on prayer for Israel, training and discipleship, the email said. So that's a really good thing. thing. We need to continue to pray for Israel. It's in a very serious situation. And basically, Israel kind of entered into a state of war as all of this was happening, and they really needed the prayer support. So in that aspect, I support it because I support Israel 100%. We need to really pray and intercede for the nation of Israel and the Jewish people that God's will would be done. They center their whole narrative of Israel is deeply entwined with the end times and the second coming of Jesus Christ. And so that is one of the things that I am happy about to see their commitment to Israel. Though IHOP KC has determined the prayer room will operate independently of a church, the ministry said it has not worked out all the details of its governance structure. We realize that the long-term health and well-being of the prayer room continues a formal governance structure of oversight, accountability, and spiritual strength, the email said. We're exploring the best fit forward and committing to ensuring systems in place for solid decision-making and responsible leadership. It announced the board invited feedback and promised to support staff. Your thoughts and ideas are important to us. We welcome and value them, and we want to hear from you, the announcement said. We intend to support those who have been called to intercessory missionaries and the ones have God called in the days of head. But this was met a criticism on X from Jeremy James Whitaker, former IHOP KC director of the School of Worship. I dearly love and value 24-7 worship and prayer, but this is hard to read. 
Last time, some of our worship and singers tried appealing to give concerns. A few friends were written up and threatened and fired for insubordination and divisiveness. Appeals went unheard. Okay, so that's a former staff member summing that up. So IHOP KC will not move forward with their church. They split with Isaac Bennett and Matt Chandler, and we'll see what happens. But I have interacted with one particular person from the board, which is Malachi O'Brien, who is pretty active on Twitter. And I've had many really good conversations with him. I don't question for one second his devotion to the Lord and his love for the Lord at all. At the same time, definitely concerned with his undivided support for IHOP at every particular turn and not willing to really look fully in the face the dragon that unfolded here at IHOP KC just seemed to defend them every step of the way. But I noticed that Malachi was part of installing Pastor Greg Locke as an apostle. Okay, so let's just take a video, a look at that video real quick. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and in verse 28, the Lord has appointed to the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers. We are here today, Pastor Greg, Pastor Ty, today also to say Apostle Greg and Apostle Ty to officially recognize what so many have recognized for many years. Nine months ago, in this place, Pastor Mike Signorelli gave a word at the end of the National Deliverance Conference. Something was conceived in the Spirit that today we're giving birth to. Amen? Amen. And so today is the official apostolic installation service. Jesus Christ loves Global Vision Bible Church so much, so much, that he not only has given them once an evangelist, a teacher, a prophet, a pastor, but now an apostle. This isn't just for you. I also believe it's you as well. It's not just Pastor Greg and Pastor Ty. It's Apostle Greg and Apostle Ty. I believe that. With every Okay, so we're seeing in that video Malachi O'Brien installing Pastor Greg Locke as an apostle. I'm not sure how they pick who decides to install people as an apostle and come to the position and decision to install people as an apostle in the church. Um, been going to be doing a deep dive into the role of apostles and prophets in the church. If there is any role recently, I'm studying it on my own and doing a deep dive on this, taking a deeper look into this because of the whole IHOP KC situation. And But the truth is, I was spending some time with the Lord and really just um, thinking about this, and just a, a thought came to me that if there is such thing as a modern-day apostle, shouldn't it be harder to get to become an apostle than it is to get into the Baseball Hall of Fame? And I don't know if that thought was from me or from the Lord, but the truth is, is that at least in the Baseball Hall of Fame, they have a process which many people are involved in, and they vote, and it's a collective decision made by dozens, maybe even hundreds of people to make a decision to install someone into the Baseball Hall of Fame. If there are such thing as modern-day apostles and prophets, which I'm not totally sure of, um, it should be harder to get into the baseball, should be harder to become an apostle than it is to get into the Baseball Hall of Fame. But these days, it seems like everybody's an apostle, and they're constantly installing people as an apostle. So the reason why I showed you this video is, to a certain degree, this shows that IHOP KC will mostly have a NAR element to it moving forward, which the NAR stands for the New Apostolic Reformation, which believes in modern-day apostles and prophets should be leading in the local church and have authority over the local church. Me right now in particular, I 
would rule out um, that they would have authority over the local church. As far as I'm concerned, I see the New Testament standard as elders and pastors running the local church and then having authority, but we'll see. I'm going to do a deep dive on this in the future. But I think this is what got IHOP KC in trouble in the first place. And I'm not sure if Greg Locke is an apostle, and I'm not sure, even if he is, that uh, Malachi uh, should be installing him as an apostle. But hopefully, um, let me just give them the benefit of the doubt, hopefully they just believe that Pastor Greg Locke is just more of a modern-day church planter and not like a real apostle, but who knows? Knowing Malachi, he probably believes that um, Greg Locke is a full-blown apostle. Now, before I close the video, I would like to share with you one of my friends who was a worship leader down at IHOP KC when everything went down there. And I feel really bad because I prayed over him and released a prophetic word about him going to IHOP. He had multiple confirm confirmations that he should go down there, and I felt God's Spirit really moving on him going down there. So he leaves the East Coast and takes his stuff and goes all the way down to Kansas City. And I was doing my best to support him as a missionary down there. We stayed in close contact and would talk often. But then the scandal broke. And so my phone started ringing. Josh, oh my goodness, you don't understand what's going on down here. And um, he ultimately made the decision that he just couldn't stay there. I mean, almost within a day or two, he said, Josh, I, I know the Lord is calling me out of here. Listen, guys, like I said before, we must worship the Lord in spirit and truth. And if we want real worship, we cannot truly worship God and think that with all this junk beneath the surface that we could just move forward and enter into true worship. Jesus, when he met with the Samaritan woman who was a sinner, and Jesus would, would cleanse her of all her sin and give her a new beginning and a new name. And we need to leave room for that, okay? But the truth is, is Jesus tells that Samaritan woman, there is coming a time where you're going to worship neither here nor there, okay? In any particular place. But a time is coming when people will worship the Father and they must worship in spirit and truth. That's the type of worship that God is looking for, not just to worship him in his spirit and discipline by showing up, but to really be living the life, to really have the right words coming out of our mouth and living a real lifestyle of connection to the vine, connection to God through Jesus. And that's the kind of worship that we need to enter into. If there is going to be a movement of God's spirit during the end times, we're going to have to worship in spirit and truth because people are seeing through the BS. People are seeing through the schemes and scans and scandals in church. Unbelievers are taking notice of this. And so if we want to see true worship, it's going to be done in spirit and truth. And my friend, Young Lee, couldn't worship at, at IHOP KC anymore. His heart was just too broken. That ministry really hurt so many people like my friend, Young Lee. It hurt hundreds of people that had moved down to Kansas City, that had moved their whole family down there. Hundreds and hundreds of people, even worldwide. It even broke my heart. So he went down to Kansas City to start a life down there and then had to come back to the tri-state area, move everything back as a result of all of this. I remember just being on the phone with him so devastated, not, even, not, not even knowing what to really say to him to mend his broken heart. I just kind of wanted to be like Job, just hear him out and just pray with him. But in, if you look, it took him months to get back into worship again and just wanted to be a good friend and, and just encourage him in his gift because he's just such a talented worship leader. And finally, he's getting back into the saddle. His YouTube channel just really started taking off recently. I'm from New York City, so almost nothing impresses me because you've seen it all in New York City. You've seen the best of the best. But I can confidently say Young Lee is one of the best worship leaders I have ever heard in my whole entire life. I heard him once. He was in Long Island, New York. I was just stunned stunned by his worship. He was one of the best worship leaders I ever heard in my life. 
And to me, he's even a better person than he even is a worshiper. He really loves the Lord with his whole heart. He's responsive to the Holy Spirit. And he is carrying an anointing that will greatly impact this generation. And I strongly recommend you follow his YouTube channel. Let me bring that up right now. So this is his worship channel. It's called Why Keys Worship. Okay, on YouTube. And I strongly recommend you follow his channel. I am working with him to help get his music out and help promote him because I just believe in this guy so much. He's going to be a major player in worship in the days ahead. And I want to help redeem this time in his life. By going through this heartbreaking situation, we know that in the book of Romans, it says this, and this is one of the closing words I want to leave for this video, that God turns around all things for the good of those who love him. And we see this even in the Old Testament, in the story of Joseph, how what the enemy meant for evil, the Lord wants to turn it around and use it as a divine reversal to say, I know the enemy did this. But in the presence of your enemies, in the presence of this battle, I want to turn this around and use it for your good. And that's what God wants to do in the midst of these scandals, in the midst of this cleansing that's going on in the church, in the midst of everything that's going on in the church. God wants to use all of these situations for his good. We don't want to get into bitterness. We don't want to get into unforgiveness. We don't want to get into resentment. We don't want to say, I'm going to stop going to church. I'm going to stop believing in the church. All they want is money anyway. We don't want to believe things like that because the Bible says not to forsake the assembling and even to do so even more as the day approaches so as much as i'm heartbroken as much as i'm destroyed over what happened as much as young is destroyed at what happened at ihop kc we must continue to press into god i still believe in the charismatic movement i still believe in God, in Joel chapter 2, that God is going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh and he's going to be moving in these times, even to the very end of the age. He's going to be with us. He's going to be moving. And as much as I'm brokenhearted, I've grieved, I've processed that. And it is time at some point to move forward into ministry. And I just wanted to give you just a really good worshiper to listen to. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. If you listen to Young's page and it, it really blesses you, please comment down and follow up with me. But I really want to help redeem this time for Young. This heartbreaking situation at IHOP, like moving down there, then having to move back and then, and then just feeling brokenhearted that you don't even want to worship. And then he gets back in the saddle and then God is really starting to move in his YouTube page. But uh, please help redeem this time for Young. I pray that you would follow his YouTube page at Y Keys Worship and uh, l take a listen to some of his music. I really feel like this guy is going to be a major player in the worship movement to come. And I haven't heard anybody like him, to be honest. So go ahead and follow his page. I'm going to play one quick song from him and uh, we're going to end the video. But this was the song Gratitude that he released last week, 127,000 views on this video. And I just said, I called him up and I just said, I'm just so happy for you, Young. After everything you've been through at IHOP, after all these devastating situations that you've been through, you, you released this song Gratitude. And I've been a YouTuber for a long time. I have several different channels for several different businesses. And he's got 7K subscribers. Small channels like this very rarely get 127K views. So this song, Gratitude, Giving Thanks Through Hardship, and which was an intimate worship service, uh, song, went viral. And basically, I'm just so happy for Young to see God redeem this situation. He's back up worshiping again. And I'm just going to play a song, a small sample from this, and we'll close the video.
Wow. Oh, man. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a sample there from um, Young's content. And I just feel the Holy Spirit when he when he plays his music and I'm just uh, just a big fan of his and hoping that you'll follow Y Key's worship but uh, I'm going to close out the video and um, and just thank you for following me and listening to this episode I want to know your thoughts about everything that's going on at KC one of the best things about the these videos is it gives the community a place to talk about these things that are deeply impacting the church talk about how it's impacting you talk about your feelings we need to process these things i really don't want to get into bashing people in the comment section and demonizing people i don't think it's very helpful um, what's done is done and we've definitely acknowledged it we definitely said this is wrong it's not going to happen again people have been removed from ministries but just really want to leave this as a place where people can vent their feelings, vent what's going on with them and the impact, especially if you've been impacted by IHOP Casey, Mike Bickle, the ministry, Misty Edwards, and everybody down there. They've had a huge impact on my life. I'm thankful for that. And um, But it's very important, guys. Not how we start the race, but it's how we finish. Because a lot of times we can start really well. And for me in particular, I made a lot of mistakes in my life. I dropped out of ministry for a while and even stopped believing in God, stopped going to church and just entered into a really dark place in my life, just totally gave up on the life and ministry. But coming back from all of that, it was the Lord's speaking to me saying, God, it's not how you start the race. It's how you finish it. And I want to be one of those. I've made mistakes. I've fell. I've fallen and really, really hurt myself and others. But at the same time, I want to get back in the saddle because it's not how you start. It's how you finish the race. And we want to be ones that finish well, that stay consistent with the Lord, even during the tough times, even during the hard times, to be those that finish well. And so on my, that's my prayer for you and prayer for everybody. And I'm just going to close in a word of prayer. Lord, for everybody, I just pray that you would continue just healing everybody in the IHOP community, everybody that followed this ministry, everybody that was hurt and disappointed by Mike and various other leaders. Lord, that you would heal them, God, that you would restore them, especially the Jane Doe's and, and the people that were really hurt in so many ways. God, according to Psalm 23, restore their soul. Lead them beside green pastures and still waters. Show them that the love of the Father, show them that your love for them is bigger than any claim on their lives, or bigger than anything that's ever happened to them. God, that you coming into their life can overshadow anything, God. The hurt and the pain is real. We acknowledge that. We understand that these wounds run deep and could even take years to heal from. But God, we're praying for restoration for everybody down at IHOP KC, for everybody involved, that according to Romans 8.28, that if they hold on to you, that they press on into you, you will turn around for the good of those who love you. All things, that you're going to turn this situation around, just like you turned it around for my friend Young here. And it was just brokenhearted and destroyed. But God, you're beginning to breathe on this ministry. Heal young Lee. Put your spirit upon him and Y Keys worship YouTube page so that he can go out. Lord, so many ministries are going to come from this in the IHOP situation, whether it's the Wake Up and Win po podcast with Blazy and his wife, or many different ministries are going to come from this IHOP situation to reverse the damage that the Lord has done, to reverse everything that the enemy has done. The message of the gospel is going to go forth. The power of the Holy Spirit is going to continue to go forth. And devil, you haven't won in this situation. It looks like you have but out of this multiply these ministries multiply these peoples to go forth and do damage to the kingdom of darkness the way that they've done damage to the church here god and we're just going to hold on to you until you turn around 
all things for the good of those that love you. Lord, there are some people right now, I'm just feeling in my heart that are just on the sidelines, that are just broken and in despair by everything that happens. I pray according to the word that God, that you would send life into dead bones, that you would put the Zoe life of God to come upon them. Those that have been hurt, those that have been victimized, those that are on the sidelines right now, God, put the spirit of God come upon them right now and breathe them back to life. Wake them up right now, God. Wake them up right now, God, that we're in serious times and that you need every person in your army off the bench and in the game to be available in this end times movement for God, to be available in the church right now, calling all of those who are on deck, get up, wake up, and some of the first stages of healing from a devastated wound and devastating situations is you're limping or you're just able to walk. You're not able to run right away. Lord, we'll take that and honor your faith where it's at. But Lord, for those that have been devastated by this whole situation and have become disillusioned, heal them, bring them back right now by the power of your spirit. Bring them back into ministry, back into the church right now by the power of your spirit. And Lord, redeem this according to Romans 8.28. So thank you for watching today. Appreciate it. All the support and encouragement for this channel. We're going to be at 75,000 subscribers before I can turn around. God has used this stroll ministry at first. I didn't even want to do a YouTube page. And God just kept uh, just nagging me about it and leaning to me. And now I'm starting to begin to see what exactly he was up to and why he wanted to do this. But if you want to support this ministry so I can continue to do videos like this in the future, it's very takes a lot of time. It's very expensive. I really appreciate that. You can find that information in the comment section down below. If this is your first time watching or you're a new viewer, just enjoy the video. But if you've been blessed by this ministry, if you've been blessed by my content, you can find that in the description section below and any size offering will do. Some, a lot of people just give five and $10. It really makes a difference. Thank you. Remember that Christianity is three things. It's to love the your Lord, your God, with all your heart, mind, and soul to look upward. And that love is going to go inward, right? Inside of you, affect you, and then you're going to go out, number two, and you're going to love others the way that God has loved you. If we truly love God, we're going to love others, and we're going to love other people well, all right? If there's something missing in there, and we're constantly fighting with other people, and there's a disaster wherever we go, we got to go deeper into our prayer closet with God. Because when we truly love God, we're going to love others and it's going to go outward. And the third part of that is to fulfill the Great Commission, to tell everybody about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The good news of the gospel, that he died on the cross for your sins, to save you, to give you eternal life, to raise you up with him, and that you can be part of his, his army to go into the old world, baptizing people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So just thank you for watching today. Be blessed.